Welcome back to MTG Burgeoning. That is your channel for all things magic. In today's video, we are going to add the next 20 creature cards with mana values of 6 into the Momir Vig Cube. What's up, MTGBC? That is the MTG Burgeoning Community. Welcome back to another installment of our ongoing Momir Vig Cube series. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this series or you just need a refresher, look in the description below for a link to an introduction to the Momir Vig Cube series. And while you're down there in the description below fishing for that, you can also click the link to Cube Cobra where you can see the entire contents of the cube as it stands right now. So we've got 20 creature cards with CMCs of six and we're starting things off with Kogla the Titan Ape. A 7-6 that when it ETBs it's going to fight up to one target creature we don't control. In a format like Momir Vig that is void of any instant or sorcery spells, any creatures that have any abilities that can fight, destroy, exile, or get rid of any creatures on the battlefield will be highly coveted in this creature-heavy format. When Kogla attacks, we destroy target artifacts or enchantment defending player controls. Since this is a Momir Vig format, there won't be any artifacts or enchantments for Kogla to destroy. Unless, however, we have any artifact creatures or enchantment creatures for Kogla to target. Of course, there will be both of those creature types in the Momir Vig cube. And lastly, for one and a green, we can return target human we control to our hands and Kogla will gain indestructible until end of turn. A couple of points about this rules text. I'm sorry, this not this rules text. A couple points about this ability. First, you're going to make sure you want to have those green mana sources in your basic land deck so that you can activate Kogla's ability. Secondly, there is no guarantee that you will have a human under your control that you can utilize to sacrifice or to return to your hand because every creature that's summoned from the cube is done so randomly. And additionally, because each creature that comes out of the Momir Vig cube is a, a co I'm sorry, a token copy. Any creature that is returned to a hand is going to be exiled because when a token leaves the battlefield and the process of that completes itself, the token ceases to exist. So there are a lot of hoops to jump through in order to give Kogla indestructibility. Even without that, however, ETB to fight a creature and with the potential of destroying any artifact or enchantment creatures, Kogla the Titan Ape is a very strong contender for one of the best six drops in the cube. Next up, Mono Black Edition, we have Kothofed, a Soul Hoarder. It's a 6-6 six, six flyer, and whenever a permanent owned by another player is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, we draw a card and we lose a life. This may seem on the face to be beneficial for the purposes of card advantage. However, if we're sitting down to a game of Momir Vig with three opponents and our starting life total is only 24 and we know that each time a permanent leaves the battlefield and goes straight to the I'm sorry, leaves the battlefield and goes to the graveyard, that our life total is going to tick down one. Even though a 6-6 six, six flyer is a huge body in the air to send into combat, I would be a little wary about Kofa Fed's ability in the long game, particularly if any of our opponents have any ways in which to draw out the game through lifelink. Alright, creature number three, our first colorless edition, it is Kozlik's Pathfinder, a 5-5 five, five that you must activate its ability with a colorless mana, and the only way you can do that in the Momir Vig Cube is to make sure you have wastes in your basic land deck. Tapping any of your other basics, your islands, your mountains, your forests, your swamps, or your plains will not do it. It is required that you activate this ability with colorless mana and if you are fortunate enough to do that you can make target creature unable to block Kozilek's Pathfinder this turn. It is a 5-5 five, five walker. I don't know like we have said many times in the past not every creature that's in the Momir Vig cube is uber powerful or uber useful. Creature number four a number a second 
Mono Black Edition, we have Loquatus' Champion. 6-3, when an ETB's target player loses 6 life. So right off the bat, just for having Loquatus' Champion ETB on our side of the battlefield, one of our opponents will lose 25% of their starting life total. However... When Loquatus' champion leaves the battlefield, that same player will gain 6 life. Fortunate for us, we can pay a black mana to regenerate him. Just make sure you've got those black mana sources in your basic land deck. Hitting the 1 quarter mark, creature number 5, we have Lena, Selfless Champion. 3-3, three, three, and when she ETBs, we create a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token for each non-token creature we control. So unfortunately, for the purposes of this variance, Lena will create just one... I'm sorry, I said that the wrong way. Lena will not create any white soldier creature tokens at all, because every creature is going to be a token copy of a creature summoned from the cube. We can sacrifice Lena, and creatures we control with power less than Lena's power gain indestructible until end of turn. Like we said earlier with Kozilek's Pathfinder, not every creature in included in the cube is going to be uber useful or uber powerful. In a lot of ways, sinking six mana into your Momir Vig Simic Visionary Avatar and putting Lena onto the battlefield is a 3-3 that gives us a restricted, temporary, indestructible ability. That's a feel-bad moment, folks. That's a feel-bad moment from the six drop. All right, another six drop here. Of course, all of the creatures in this video are six drop, but here's another mono white one. We have Light of the Legion, a 5-5 five, five flyer with the Mentor mechanic. Whenever Light of the Legion attacks, we can put a plus one, plus one counter on target attacking creature with lesser power. And because we have the Wondrous of Evasion on Light of the Legion, we should safely be able to send it into combat without thinking that our opponents, at least one of them, will be able to destroy Light of the Legion in combat. 5-5 five, five flyer is pretty good. And lastly, when Light of the Legion dies, we can put a plus one plus one counter on each white creature we control. Again, there are no guarantees that we will have any white creatures under our control because all creatures summoned from the cube are done so randomly. All right, our third consecutive mono white edition, we have Linvala the Preserver, a 5-5 five, five flyer that when it ETBs, if an opponent has more life than we do, we will gain five life. Additionally, when Linvala ETBs, if an opponent controls more creatures than we do, we can create a 3-3 three, three white angel creature token with flying and slap that bad boy or that bad girl right onto the battlefield. So all we have to do is make sure that we have at least the second highest amount of life and we have to hope that someone any one of our other opponents has more creatures than we do. And if that's the case, then for the investment of six mana, we're going to get eight power and eight toughness stretched across two evasive bodies. And we're going to gain more than 20% of our starting life total. All right, next up, and another colorless edition, we have Lumen Grid Gargoyle. Very quickly, it's a 4-4 flyer. That is all. Next up, we have the Malfield Twins. It's 4-4, four, four, and when it dies, we will create two 2-2 two, two black zombie creature tokens. Now, for the investment of six mana, 4-4 four, four with no evasion may seem like a hurt moment. However, when it does die, we will be able to flood the board with a couple of either chump blockers or with a couple of creatures that we can swarm one of our opponents who may not be fortunate enough to have enough creatures to block all of ours. All right, reaching the halfway point here, we have our first mono red edition. It is Magus of the Arena, a 5-5 human wizard. We can pay three, we can tap Magus of the Arena, and we can tap target creature we control and target creature of an opponent's choice they control, and each of those creatures deal damage equal to its power to the other. So this is going to be one of those situations where most likely the opponent is not going to pick a creature that's that when they experience that creature's loss is going to be a massive detriment to their game. So we can think of Magus of the Arena as a way in which to clear the battlefield of all of those, how could we say, um, maybe parasitic chump blocking nuisances. 
All right, starting off the second half of this video, we have Mahamadi Jin, a 5-6 flyer. That is all. All right, next up we have our first multicolored edition, and that's going to be Malfagor. It's a 6-6 six, six flyer that when it ETBs, we discard our hand, and each opponent sacrifices a creature for each card discarded this way. So with Malfagor residing in the 6 spot, it may, be, it may be relatively small number of cards in our hand, if any, because each time we summon a creature from the Momir Vig Cube, we have to discard a card from our hand. And of course we want to play lands each turn so that we can continue to summon creatures from the cube. So whether or not we have any cards in our hand at all when Malfagor ETBs, that remains to be seen. But if we do, we will be losing those cards and our opponents will be losing some of their creatures. The payoff may be worth it, particularly because in this format, we have no instance or sorcery spells, so any type of removal is going to come in the form of our creatures, and if it takes losing our hand to get rid of two, three of each of our opponent's creatures, well, it may be beneficial enough, it may be beneficial enough to do so. And next up, we have a Mono Blue Edition Maze Glider, a 3-5 flyer that gives multicolored creatures we control flying. Again, there is no guarantee that we'd be able to have any multicolored creatures on our side of the battlefield because every single creature is summoned randomly. However, for the purposes of trying to win the game via combat, any advantages are going to be advantages that we welcome with arms wide open. Here could be one of those multicolored creatures right now, and can you imagine if we also were able to add flying to Meglanoth? This is one of my all-time favorite creatures, MTGBC, and you're going to see why right now. It's a 6-6 six, six beast with Vigilance and Trample, so we can send it into combat, and we can hold it back for defensive purposes because, as you're going to see, it can bark as loud as it can bite. Whenever Meglanoth blocks a creature, Meglanoth deals damage to that creature's controller equal to Meglanoth's power. So we send this 6-6 Vigilant Trampler into combat. It survives. It deals some combat damage to one of our opponents. Because of Vigilance, it stays untapped and it can also be a blocker. One of our opponents decides to foolishly send one of their creatures at us. We declare Meglanoth as a blocker, and that creature's controller will take more than 25... I'm sorry, not more than. will take exactly 25% of its starting life total and direct damage right from Meglanoth. This could be one of the steals of the Momir Vig Cube if you are fortunate to summon it out of one of 200 from the sixth spot. Next up, reaching the three-quarter mark of this video, we have a Mono Black Edition. It is Midnight Banshee. It's a 5-5 Spirit with Wither, which means once more that this creature will deal damage to creatures in the form of minus one, minus one counters. At the beginning of our upkeep, put a minus one, minus one, a minus one, minus one counter on each non-black creature. So this one could go a lot of different ways, MTGBC, because we have no idea what's on our side of the battlefield, and we'll have no idea what's on our opponent's side of the battlefield, particularly because with the randomization of summoning these creatures from the Momir Vig Cube, it's possible that that Midnight Banshee could hurt us more than it could hurt our opponents. But that's part of the cube. Not every creature is always going to be uber helpful or uber powerful. Next up, another mono blue edition, we have Mind Scour Dragon, a 4-4 flyer that when it deals combat damage to an opponent, that opponent, I'm sorry, that player will put the top four cards of their library into their graveyard. Kind of tame because each, you know, each player is going to begin with the basic 60 card deck, and again, there really isn't any form of, um graveyard recursion because everything in the graveyard are just going to be lands. So Mind Scour Dragon's most important characteristic on that card is probably the flying. Next up, another mono black edition, Minion of the Wastes. This is a minion with trample when an ETBs pay any amount of life. Minion of the Waste has power and toughness each equal to that amount. 
This is going to be a very, very interesting creature if any player summons it to their side of the battlefield because of the game, because of the gameplay, because of the board state, and because of where everybody are with their life totals. Minion of the Waste could come down as something relatively small or could come down as a massive, potentially game-ending threat. Next up, Mono Red, we have the Moonvale Dragon, a 5-5 flyer that gives fire breathing to every creature we control for every one red mana that we tap. So MTGBC, make sure that you have those mountain sources in your basic land deck because Moonvale Dragon's activated ability is game-ending. Speaking of potentially game-ending abilities... Next up, we have Morog, Fury of Akum, a 6-6 Minotaur Warrior. Each creature we control gets plus one, plus zero for each time it has attacked this turn. This also has the landfall mechanic, and whenever a land enters the battlefield under our control, if it's our main phase, there's an additional combat phase after this phase, and at the beginning of that combat, we untap all creatures we control. Now, unfortunately, with you know, without there being any instant or sorcery spells, Morrog's landfall ability is a little bit nerfed. However, as we've already seen throughout this series, we do have creatures that can get lands from our library out onto the battlefield, and hopefully we will be able to do that to trigger Morrog multiple times. We'll have to see. All right, creature number 20, the last one for today. It is Mono Black, and it is Morkrut Necropod, a 7-7 seven, seven with Menace. And whenever it attacks or blocks, we sacrifice another creature or land. The 7-7 seven, seven is massive. The Menace is fantastic, um, is fantastic, um, not a version, I'm sorry, evasion, jeez. This, the, menace is eva the, the Menace is great evasion. The 7-7 seven, seven is huge. You're just going to have to figure out if it's going to be worth sacrificing a creature or a land to send this slug horror into combat. All right, there you have it. MTGBC, 20 more creatures into the Momir Vig Cube with CMCs of six. Let me know in the comment section below which are your favorites. This is MTG Burgeoning, your channel for all things magic.